Isaiah 61. And we're going to continue what we were talking about last Sunday. And, um, and then we're going to move on from there. Amen. So last Sunday we were talking about being trees of righteousness. That's really what we were talking about, being trees of righteousness. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Amen. How do you know we're supposed to bear fruit? Amen. Amen. And, and Jesus said that your fruit shall remain. And so, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Amen. Let's, let, let's read here Isaiah 61. Amen. Let, 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 let us pray first before we get in the Word. And, uh, and we're going to get y'all out of here. Anybody going to Marlene's party today? Amen. I know she have a birthday party. If not, just pray for her. Amen. Because I, I, I know I'll, I probably won't be able to make it. But we'll definitely be praying for her. Mm -hmm. Amen. Father God, we, and also keep drilling in prayer. In, in your prayer. Amen. She, she says she's doing okay, but she, she's sober. So let's keep her lifted up. Amen. Father God, we thank you today. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And Father God, the Bible said, for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now, Father God, you know everything that your people are facing today. And Father God, I pray that you would touch their hearts, you would touch their minds this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, I pray that you would give us a rainbow from heaven this morning. That, Father God, that we may be able to minister, amen, to, to, to the spirits of your people this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. And, Father God, we say, Holy Spirit, you have recourse this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray, we honor you, and we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all do something for me. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And just worship the Lord. Father God, we thank you this morning. Don't worry about it if you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm talking to God. It's just between me and him. Amen. Brando Roshi Kanda Bahusha Tabaha Sanda Bahusha Taba. Branda la Bahusha and the Bahusha Tabahashi and the Bahusha Taba. Sanda Rabahushi Kanda Bahusha Taba. Let me tell you, open your hearts up. Open your hearts up. Amen. The presence of God is here. Amen. Just, 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 just lift your heart up. Just lift your heart. Open your heart up. I heard God say something to me that was awesome. Just, just, just lift, lift, lift your hands. And, and listen, I'm gonna say to the, this to you. And I'm gonna give you this prophecy. I'm gonna give you this word that God just dropped in my spirit. I saw the presence of God sitting over the service. Hallelujah. And I heard the voice of God say to me. He said, "I'm getting ready to release my people." And he said, my people will begin to walk in my divine nature. They will begin to walk in my presence. They will begin to walk in my power like never before, says the Lord. He said, I will begin to transform. I will begin to change my people, says the Lord. He said, as they come into my presence, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. I will begin to break the strongholds of the enemy. Break off old habits. Break off old attitudes. That's going to be broken up in your life like never before. For the Lord said this will be a season of transformation. A season of change, says the Lord. He said the same glory that Adam lost when Adam lost the glory. When Adam lost the crown of glory when he was in the garden. God said, I'm restoring the glory back to my sons and back to my daughters, says the Lord. Just, just open your heart and receive it. Amen. Receive the work of the Holy Spirit. We know this is not natural, but it's supernatural. Amen. If you receive the, the, the working of the Holy Spirit, I guarantee you, amen. That you will never be the same again. The things that you struggle with, the things that you fight with, God is going to break it over your life. And I hear the Lord say supernatural intervention. God is just going to, he's going to come through for you. He's going to bring some changes for you in this season, says the Lord. God said this will be a season of new opportunities. Amen. That, that will open up for many of you, says the Lord. 
Rusia la bagasha nda bahosa taba randa la bahosa taba hasi nda ba randa la bahosa taba hasa nda la bahusa taba randa la bahosa taba hasa taba randa la bagusha taba things that you struggle with God say I'm gonna break the struggle says the Lord I'm gonna break the struggle says the Lord and you're gonna break through you're gonna break through. You're going to come through what you've been going through you, in this season, says the Lord. Father God, we thank you this morning. Father God, we welcome you this morning. Father God, I receive that word this morning, in Heavenly Father. And I thank you for transformation, God, that we'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know what, what's interesting? God just dropped it. We're, we're gonna, we're, we're, we are in Isaiah 61. But I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to run for a minute to, to something you know. Uh, Romans chapter 12 for just a minute. Because he just spoke to me to read that. And so I want to read Romans 12 and 1 for just a minute. And um, Romans 12 and 1. Is that the scripture that talks about the present your body a living sacrifice? Mm -hmm. Holy and acceptable unto God, mm -hmm. which is your reasonable service. He said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How many know that you have to be renewed in your mind? Amen. amen. If you're going to change your attitude, if you're going to change your, your, amen. If you're actually going to change your direction in life, then you got to change the way you think. Isn't that, isn't that right? And, and that means that also you got to take the word of God and you got to apply the word of God to your life. You got to meditate. Joshua 1 and 8 talked about meditating in the laws of God. That you may have good success and that you may prosper. So without the word of God, you can't change your direction. You can't change your nature. You can't change your attitude. Amen. Because how I many you know now, we really supposed to have the character of God. And I mean, you know, that's what the Word of God will do for us. It will transform us. It will change the way we think. It will change our attitudes, amen, toward one another, amen, toward the sinner man, toward our family, toward our loved ones. How I many you know that you can't be a Christian and, 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 and live in confusion among yourselves? Amen. The Bible said that God is not the author of confusion, but love and peace. How many you know that there are so many Christian people that are living in, confu in confusion? That, amen. They can't get along mm. with one another. But, but, but I believe that when you take the word of God and, and you apply it to your life, God will give you the wisdom of how to deal with your family, how to deal with loved ones, how to, amen, how to deal with this world. And, amen. But you got to get the word of God in your heart and you got to rely on that word, Brother Mark. Because if we try to do it with our own reasoning, our own intellect, our own mind, I mean, nothing will ever change. We don't, because we're always trying to do it in your ability. That's why, you, and I believe this with all my heart, that's why you got to put the word on every situation in your life. Amen? That, that, and, and, and I'm being practical. And that means that with your husband, that's with your wife, that's with your children, that's with your finances, that's with every area of your life. Whether it's a, if you're fighting addictions, if you're fighting whatever it is you're fighting in your life, the word of God has the power to transform you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know the word, how do you know you can't defeat the enemy? Mm -hmm. The word is your weapon. Mm -hmm. And so if you, you sit around giving the enemy your opinion, it don't mean nothing. Mm. Your opinion is not a weapon. Your opinion is what you think, what you feel. And how many know that we don't live by that? We live by the word of God. Amen? Now, I don't know about y'all. That's the way I live. I try to live my life every day based upon the word of God. And that's not being over-religious. Some people go, that's well, you just over-religious. No, I'm not. <laughs> Living this way is supposed to be natural. You know when people do start talking about, well, this is the way Jesus want to do it. People say, well, just use common sense. That's the problem. We've been using common sense too much. That's why it's not working. We got to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Because guess what? Your common sense can't work out spiritual things. Mm. You know, I, I was thinking about something this week, and I said, well, I can do this. I can do that. 
God said, you need to shut up. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. But you need to let me work it out for you. And that's the problem with many of us is that we haven't learned how to release things in the hands of God. We are busy trying to work it out ourselves. And, 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 and I, I just sense this in my spirit. But, but God said we got to let things go and we got to allow him to work it out for us. Amen. So I say to you this morning, release it. Let it go. Don't, don't, don't try to work things out. Don't try to figure it out. I, and, 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 and listen, because... Mm. If you try to work it out, Pat, it's going to get worse. If you let it go, then God said, if you leave it in my hands, then I can supernaturally intervene in your situation and work it out for you. So we, we can't do things in our power. We can't do things in our ability. We got to say, God, I give it all to you. Okay, I don't know why God does this to me. <laughs> but Mm. I, I, I'm going to say this mm. and it ain't going to make sense to your head <laughs> but it's going to make sense to your spirit but I heard God say that he just said this to me God is going to provide for how many know that God is a provider? Amen. But as I was, he, he just, it, God dropped this in my spirit. He just showed me a vision, Mark. And he said this to me. He said, tell the church to rely on me. He said to me, he said, look back at the Old Testament. He said, when I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he said, did not take care of them. Then the Bible said he rained manna down from heaven to feed them. They wanted water. You know how we are. You know, if you used to eat steak, you don't want bologna. And, and, and you know, some, it's just the way it goes. But, but, but how do you know sometimes when you go with God, sometimes you got to sacrifice just a little bit. Amen. Uh, 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 you know, and, and that's part of the process is you're going to go through. Mm. You might as well get used to that. You're going to go through. But in the end, God is going to bring you into a place of a place of blessing. But the Lord said to me, he said, did, did not rain manna down from heaven? Did, did, in the morning when they woke up, the Bible said that God caused, amen, bread to come up on the grass, little morsels of bread for them to eat. So, so God supernaturally provided for them. L listen to me. I want you to hear me. They didn't have to go to a store. Y'all, uh, do y'all get what I'm saying to you? Amen. See, I, I know it's going to sound crazy. Amen. These people was in the wilderness for 40 years. Little kids like, like them over there. You, now, I can't put y'all clothes on. Y'all too small for me. Uh, I'm making a point. Because the Bible said that God caused their clothes to grow with their body. As they grew old. That none of their clothes waxed old. But, but as they grew, for, now think about this. You in the wilderness for 40 years, ain't no way you're going to be wearing the same old clothes and you don't wear them out. The Bible said that God didn't let any of their clothes, amen, I say get raggedy, uh, get holes in them. They, they, their shoes grew on their feet. Now you know that's something. Their shoes grew <laughs> on their feet. They, they didn't have to go find, amen, go to Hendricks or some of these shoe stores we go to and spend all this money, amen, but they did buy some, but the ones they had, God caused them to grow on their feet. That's supernatural provision. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, can I dare tell you, God said, tell my people this. We're so used to depending on the natural that we don't trust the supernatural. We don't believe that. Well, if, if I don't walk in the store and buy it, God can't provide it. Now, let me tell you something. There are many times in my life, especially in the early part of my ministry, that I would pray to God about things that I needed for my life. And I would wake up in the morning and go look out on the front porch. Somebody, and somebody actually did this. They put a whole row of suits on my front porch. Supernatural provision. 
I didn't ask for it. I didn't know they was coming. Mm. I look out there, I had Sue sitting up there, and then I'll tell you like this. I'm talking about people that I hadn't talked to in years that, that would call me and buy cars, and and and, and, and sometimes I get up and I say, y'all ain't got no money. And then I walk out to the mailbox, somebody I knew two years ago put a check in the mail for two, three thousand dollars, said, God told me, prophet, to sow this into your life because of what you told me ten years ago. He woke me up this morning and told me to sow into your life. That's supernatural natural provision. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God said, tell my people, quit just trusting in what you can see. See, Patty, you're about to go to work. You're going to make some money. That's why you're going. You ain't going there to grin and smile. You're going to make money, amen, and do what you need to do. Of course, you're going to grin and smile. That's part of your job. And you should enjoy your job. But that ain't the only way God want to provide for you. But because of our carnal mindset, mm. we believe that provision can only come through work and labor. But if you'll take your time, go back through the Old Testament and look. God rained down manna from heaven. Even the Bible said he rained quail down to feed them. Supernatural provision. And I'm telling you, I heard God say this. And the strip keeper said, he said, I'll give you houses you didn't buy. I'll give you land that you didn't buy. He said, the scripture said that the wealth of the unjust is what? Laid up for the just. God, God, God said, I'll cause the sinner man to bless you. Can, can, can y'all believe that? Now, I guess y'all said, this preacher talking about money today. Amen. No, no. That, that, that's the blessings of God. That's the provisions of God. God want to meet our needs. And, and honestly, this is what I really feel like God is saying to me. That God is getting ready to manifest some supernatural provision. Stuff that you won't have to labor for. Stuff that you won't have to work for. That God is getting ready to release over your life. How many of y'all can receive that? Y'all don't, don't look at me like that with that religious look. Amen. Believe that you receive it. Amen. Because God want to bless you. God want us to have the best. Amen. God, God, listen, I was talking to a preacher friend of mine on, on yesterday. We go get mortgages. We work ourselves to death. When God can bless you with whatever you need. But you got to get yourself in a position, in a place of fellowship, where God can release his blessings over your life. Let me tell you something. I, didn't make, I got pastor friends, preacher friends right now, amen, where he lost his job, didn't know how he was going to take care of his family. But a man come up to him, gave him a deed to a house. He's living in this house now. Not only did he give him a deed to a house, but he also gave him a job. Said, come work for me. But God told me to give you the deed to this house, amen. He didn't have to pay a dime for it. And, and, what, and I'm just telling you, this is what God is telling me to tell y'all today. Some of you need God to do some things for you. I need God to do some things for me. Amen. But, I, but God is going to release supernatural provision over your life. And I feel like God is getting ready to do something. Because I don't believe he switched me just a minute ago for nothing. God <laughs> wanted me to leave. He don't want you struggling. He don't want you working yourself to death. Yeah. And I know your brain can't handle that because you used to labor to get everything that come your way. And that, well, that just don't make sense. <laughs> How God gonna bless me and I don't work? The Bible says he's the same today as yesterday. He changed life, right? So what he did then, he can do now. Hey, turn that air up, please. Thank you. Because it ain't got hot, dude. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It was cold in here earlier, but, but it, it, it actually got hot. Yeah, 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 I'll lift your hands for me. I, I'm just trying to follow my spirit out. Uh, and I feel like God wants me to release this word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you see every family, you see every need, God, in this house. Now, Father, your word said that whatever we ask in the name of Jesus, you would do. Now, Father God, all I know is what you showed me is that you're getting ready to bring supernatural provision over your people's life. 
Now, Father God, I decree in the name of Yahshua, I decree in Jesus' name that supernatural provision will come from the north, the south, the east, and the west, Father God. I call it forth over every family and every home that is represented here today. Father God, I speak Psalms 112 that say, Riches and wealth shall be in the house of the righteous, and our seed shall be mighty in the earth. So, Father God, I decree that, that every, every young child, our grandchildren, our children, our speak in the name of Jesus that they're going to do great things Father God in this earth in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, we thank you this morning that you are Jehovah Jireh, that you're our provider. So Father God, I decree by the blood of Jesus that supernatural provision is going to manifest in this season, God. I decree in this week to come, God, that supernatural increase raises on jobs, God. I decree raises on jobs. I decree supernatural favor, God. I decree deeds to homes, God. I decree cars, God. I decree family and loved ones saved and delivered. I decree it by the power of the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, your word said that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. Thank so, Father you. God, this morning, Father God, we receive the wealth of God. We receive the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and add no sorrow. We thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus, we pray. Yes, yes. Amen and amen. amen. Now, I just had to say it because yes. that's what he told me to say. Yes. Now, let's, let, let's read Isaiah 61 <laughs> real quick. What time is it? I'm going to get y'all out of here about 15, 20 after 12. We're going to get out of here. Amen. Isaiah 61. Y'all know who Isaiah the prophet was. Isaiah the prophet was known as the ego eye prophet. Because he saw so far into the future. He saw the, you know, he, you know, he saw the death and the suffering of the Messiah. So, so I, I, Isaiah was a great prophet, amen, uh, of his time. Isaiah 61 and 1. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tithing to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to, to, to the captive, and the opening of prisons to them that are bound. So, so this, is, this is Isaiah prophesying about the Spirit of God and then being up on being up on the Lord. So, so he says here, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. The word anointing means God's presence. It, it means to smear to rub. Amen. It means actually the hand of God being upon a person's life. Y'all know like when, 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 when they ordained David to become king, amen, uh, Samuel came down and anointed him. He, he put the anointing. He put God's presence upon his life. So when the anointing comes upon your life, it's the hand of God being, being over a person's life. A amen. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the good, to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to those that are captive, the opening of prisons to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the, the, of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give to them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees, Trees of righteousness planted of the Lord that he might be glorified. How many of that? Listen to what he says here. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion. He's prophesying to the church. Zion always represents the church. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion to give to them beautiful ashes, the oil of joyful mourning. How many know that, that, that God will give you joy? The Bible says joy and peace unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. That when you're going through, when you're going through the fire, that God will give you that supernatural peace. He'll give you that supernatural joy. Amen. In the midst of the storm. The Bible said in, in, in Romans 14 and 17 that the kingdom of God is joy, peace, righteousness, and the Holy Spirit. How, how do you know that when the Holy Spirit comes, he brings the divine peace of God. The word peace in the Greek is translated irene. It means to come into a place of fellowship, a place of oneness with God. So when God's presence come upon you, God will give you peace in the midst of your soul. Amen. What do people?
people do when they mourn? You know, when they go to a funeral, people mourn the death of somebody. But he said, he going he, he, he to give you ashes to appoint to them that mourn in Zion, to give to them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven, that they might be called the trees of righteousness. Planet of the Lord that he might be glorified. So when the presence of God come up in your life, he going to take the mourning away. He going to give you beauty for ashes. Y'all remember David when his son died. David, had, David, he fasted and prayed and he covered himself in ashes. It was a form of humility. Amen. He went before the presence of God because he wanted his son to live. But instead, God permitted his son to pass away. But after David got through mourning, the Bible said David got up and shook himself. Because David understood, understood that, that, that the Lord had took his, you know, took his son home and did not count how it was conceived. You know, that, that's a whole other story. But, but, but anyway, God gave David peace, and David got up, and he went about his kingly business. How you know that sometimes we may go through tragedies and things in our life, but God says here, he said, I'll give you, amen, he, he, he'll, give you, he'll give you beauty for your ashes. The things that you're going through, God will give you supernatural peace, and you won't be able to understand it. Amen. He'll take away your shame. He'll take away your hurt. He'll take away your disappointment. How I many you know that, that, that that's a supernatural peace? That's a supernatural joy. You know, neither some of the things that I'm facing in my life. It takes a supernatural peace to be able to go through it. You know, so some things I wouldn't just be calm about. Some things I wouldn't just be relaxed about. But it's because of the Holy Spirit that I find peace. Mark, you look at me, what are you talking about? Amen. Amen. I'll tell you about it one day. But. God gives me peace in the midst of the storm. So I'm not just preaching to you, I'm in it. You understand? So God gives me peace while I'm in the midst of my storm. Amen. God want to take your morning. You shouldn't sit around morning all day. You know? Amen. Crying over the loss of something. God said, I'll give you beauty for ashes. Joy for the, you know, he's going to give you joy. He said, to, 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 to take away that spirit of heaviness. Anybody ever been under heaviness? You ever come to church and you got a weight on your shoulder? Mm -hmm. And you go, Lord, I need you to take this off of me. And when you get in the presence of God, I, I've been there. And, and, and that weight just lifts off of you. You can go home, you can relax, you can lay down and go to sleep. I, that's why I always, Brother Mark, try to live in the presence of God. So, so whatever come against me, I always have peace. That's why God trying to tell us, listen, if you quit trying to work it out and you'll walk in my peace, if you'll trust me, then God said, I can fix your circumstances. Amen. So, and, and, and listen to me. Some of us, we're busy trying to do it on our own. You know, I had a, and, and, and let me say this to you. I had a prophet call me from Cincinnati, Ohio. I had talked to him in about 10 years. It's been some years since I talked to him. And he walked through the church. He, he, when I talked to him on the telephone, you know the first words that came out of his mouth when he, when he, when he, when he, he started prophesying to me? He said, prophet. God told me to tell you this. He said, God said, tell you, when you step out by faith, everything you need is going to come. And he said to me, he said, prophet, he said, I see God getting ready to give you a house. He said, they're going to give you the deed to the house. God said, you will not have to pay for the house. Now, 10 years ago, my apostle, Stood me up in front of the church in Tuscaloosa and said to me, he said, prophet, I see God giving you a house. It's going to be paid off. It's going to be supernatural. And this guy hadn't talked to me in over a few years. And that's the first.
first thing come up out of his mouth is that God is getting ready to bring supernatural provision. God is getting ready to give you a house. God is getting ready to bless you. Now, I can either receive that or reject it. But because it's a confirmation, I receive it. Because I know my apostle. My apostle ain't no liar. And when he says something, God bags, bags, 